God is telling him, as he told him to take off his shoes, the ground you stand in is holy ground, right? So they kept something similar, but they changed some things. And I have also seen the oppression where the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So God didn't abandon them. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel unto Egypt? And he, and he said, Certainly, God said, Surely I will, certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Promise kept. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Powerful words. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hiv Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. It means a very flourishing land. And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come thou and the elders of Israel unto the king of Egypt, and ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me. And now let us go, we peace thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord thy God. You know? And... I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. This is God telling him. He says, I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by, <laughs> not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the, in the midst thereof. This is God telling him what he's going to do to Pharaoh. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall, go, you shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and you shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters and you shall spoil the egyptians meaning that you're gonna you're gonna win you're gonna get out of your good and god gave moses some signs and stuff to do you know what to do back and forth and moses still didn't want to do it god said you know yeah show me your hand show me this. god converted his rod into into a serpent and back you know and then god god said show me your hand. he made his hand leopard and healed it back and moses was like yeah but still no but moses is still scared he said and Moses said unto the Lord, in chapter 4, verses 10, And Moses said unto the Lord, O, o Lord, my Lord, I am not eloquent, like I am my tongue, right? Neither here too, no, since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech, and have a slow tongue, like I stutter, stammer, right? And the Lord said unto Moses, Who had made man's mouth, or who had made it the dumb, or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will... But did you hear what he just said? God said he made all his people. The dumb, the deaf, the blind, right? All of these people, not to punish them, but he has a purpose in all of this. Look how much wonderful things you've seen and heard. Even some movies you've seen. What about Helen Keller, you know, and all that stuff. Now therefore go and I will be with thee, be with thy mouth, and I will teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send I pray thee by thy hand to him whom thou will send. And Moses still trying to get out of it. Ugh, still trying to get out of it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Did you guys know that? The Lord was like, the Lord was angry against Moses. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's doing. He said, God got angry at Moses. Right? And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? God's like, Okay, fine. You keep, you don't want to go. You still, you don't want to go. You're still scared. Isn't, isn't Aaron your brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he see it, thee, he will be glad in his heart. That was so funny. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and I will teach you what you shall do he shall be thy spokesman unto the people and he shall be even to even he shall be to the to thee instead of a mouth thou shall be to him instead of God so notice God is so willing to work with us where we are he knows some of us are scared and nervous and worried about sometimes how's gonna happen what's gonna happen he's like okay I can go to this whole big scene I'm gonna help you okay even if something as serious as that and God did help him he sent Aaron to help him and then came and told, told, told to Pharaoh to let my people go, and Pharaoh would not. And back and forth, back and forth, it would not. Even the children of Israel first they were, you know, wondering, oh, what is it? And Pharaoh told them, I'm going to increase your talent and your workload. I'm going to make you make bricks without straw. Increase your burden because you're too idle. You want a Sabbath? You want a rest? No, no, no. I'm going to make you work. And God knew that was going to happen. That's what he calls Pharaoh's heart is hardened. So God then punished Pharaoh, and he laid ten plagues on Egypt. And back and forth they went, back and forth. Pharaoh would, the plagues would happen. 
Pharaoh, they would feel it in Egypt and then they would say, okay, we're sorry and go back and tell God and tell Moses, Moses, come, 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 take it off. Moses takes it off. They get, they became, they backslide. They do the, the, the Egyptians. They said the same thing and back and forth, back and forth. Keep backsliding, keep messing up. He just wouldn't let him go. That's like Satan trying to hold you and hold you in bondage. But eventually God broke that. So God breaks that yoke. So he had one plague of the water, of the water being turned into blood. The frog, the second one. The third is lice. Fourth is flies. Fifth is plagues of moraine. Six is boils again. Seven is hail and fire. Eight was what? Locusts. Nine was a thick darkness all around. And the ten was the angel of death to kill the firstborn. Death of the firstborn of everyone there. Then they instituted the Passover service. You know, and it was very severe. The Lord protected the children of Israel even through that Exodus experience. All throughout. Now people say, oh, it's a rapture. Like, you know, before God comes, because now there's another place coming again in another time in Revelation. Seven this time. Okay, including water being turned to blood again, but the dead man's blood. Seriously, bad stuff. Talk about seals and other stuff. Revelation is very powerful, very powerful imagery. Now, as I said, as it was in the beginning, so shall happen again. So why those specific plagues? That's very interesting for one, you know? They want to spill blood, give them blood to drink, right? And a lot of the things, a lot of gods, Egyptian worship, were also these same creatures that God showed them who is in charge and what will happen. They were, God said, you can't match what I do. They can't, they can't duplicate what, what, what God does, you know? And so they went back and forth, and then finally God broke them. And, even, and then when he came down, he finally, God, um, when Pharaoh finally released them, seeing that he was broken and lost, and his firstborn son was slain, then God tell him, let's go. So here's goes the Exodus begun. That's now we get to Exodus chapter 13, you see? Start off all the way there, end up in Exodus 13. Right? Here's you know what God says. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Okay? So God said, I won't let them go that part. I know the Philistines will attack them. Let me see that. So what did what God do? The 18, but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. Right, to send them towards the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. He had to test them there also. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had straight, well, straightly war, sworn the, to the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you. Joseph said that to them. And you shall carry up my bones with you hence, with you. And they took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped and eat them in the edge of the wilderness. And he called God was wonderful to them. A pillar of cloud and also of fire. And the Lord went before them. This is verse 21 of chapter 13 of Exodus. King James Version. Old Testament. The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of, cl of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night, and you know, to warm them too, right? He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And he told them how to do it, how to make the encampment, how to make everything, and they were so nicely organized. They were, God did it very nice, and they had to be tested. They went there. They had songs, praising God and everything, singing as they went. They went into the wilderness of sin. They had to be tested and tried there. They went through enough tests. Then they started begging for food and they wanted meat. They wanted some more meat and they're tired of all the manna. And God gave them meat and they ended up in a plague upon them. Because they were, too, they were complaining too much about stuff. Not because God couldn't visit them. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came and saw Moses was trying to manage the people. It was too much for him and he was like, he was basically wasting himself away because he didn't do a division of labor in terms of how, like, you know, like, and to be a judge over them, to answer the causes that they have. And it was just draining them out because one person to carry all his people is a lot of people, you know. But eventually he listened humbly to his father-in-law Jethro and God permitted that to happen. So you see how God sometimes can have a message for you or for someone else and then have someone else answer it or assist you along the way. That's wisdom. God says human, every human person will play a role in this, in, play a role in this, war, in this battle, this spiritual battle that we are in. Okay, there will be no starless crowns in heaven for one. All of us have to play a role in this battle. We all have to take part in this epic battle. Okay? And as you get along, as you, as it went along there, God then gave them the Ten Commandments. You know, then told them about the idolatry. Then, they, you know, later on, you know, how he broke the first set when the children of Israel, you know, rose up to play and became very bad and idolatrous and adulterous and all kind of bad stuff they did. Got naked and got themselves messed up in trouble. Oh, it was a mess. But the stories are beautiful to read. And God gave them how to tell them how to take care of a sanctuary service, you know, and how to, how to, prepare the stuff and the Levitical robes and the priest and you know the, the, the offerings everything was there a lot of stuff was there you know it's the molten calf I have 11% the phone might cut off soon we're gonna get to this part in due time okay how about, how about the molten calf let's see if I have it there molten calf is there idolaters and the people all along the way back and forth and then the people complained so much and was so much they didn't have so much faith and had unbelief the people the parents God permitted them to pretty much die in the wilderness 
and then to save their children and to go into the promised land because you know the children are not going to be blamed for what their parents did god is fair now generations roughly like 40 years so they got children got saved in there and while they were there under joshua now because moses since fallen asleep you know sleep meaning that he died because of unbelief and disobeying god's one of god's um, rules about how to give the children water out of the rock because it was symbolic of him into jesus and then they went into the promised land you know and while they're there they, because they didn't obey all the rules that god told them again how to wipe away the some of the bad inhabitants who are idolatrous and wicked and murdering and doing bad things there they then have had thorns in their in their skin and pretty much it's like people they're always persecuting them including the philistines the Hivites, jebusites all these different groups there because they didn't do what god asked them to do so god then gave them leaders and ju after joshua like judges and stuff and you heard about the story of gideon and other things so we're going to get to those eventually but for now i want you to see that this is no ordinary book very special very purposeful very timely so i pray by the grace of god you continue to join us you know as you read more later on in the future and we'll just keep figuring out more and more and saying what does god have planned and laid up for us what else does god have laid up for us okay we're gonna do more in due time so let me try to get these videos uploaded in the meantime and we shall continue god be with you all and thank you for your time today okay all right god bless take care